I want to get some perspective on some of the comments that your peer in Iraq made because he said that oil prices around $65 a barrel are going to stay within that range for the coming months. That's much lower than Bahrain's requirements around fiscal break-evens. Uh, how nervous are you about that prospect? Good morning, Yusuf. Uh, well, I think it's always difficult to specul speculate about the oil price. It has been uh, for the past five years through what I call a low cycle. Now, that low cycle ultimately causes uh, a much reduced investment. And typically, you only see the impact of that seven years later. So some might argue that a supply challenge is looming in the future, and that obviously would have a positive impact on the oil price. Uh, but in terms of where it is and what's, uh, what's the best price for it to be, I think ultimately it's defined by the amount of investment that has to go in to maintain a healthy supply. Now, last year uh, had even a harder hit on the level of investment that, uh, that really goes into oil. And in, in my view, uh, that is going to exasperate uh, this challenge of, of supply in the not so uh, distant future. Excellency, a very good day to you. Uh, so with that in mind, do you think we're moving into a new cycle on the upside, a squeeze in supply and a cycle on the upside in oil prices? And where could that take us to, if not a price, maybe a bandwidth, sir? Various people say to us, $80. Are we, are we in that kind of momentum? Well, potentially. I think oil is, has been one of the hardest hit uh, industries be, because of the pandemic. And harder hit was the refinery sector. That has not re responded as fast as the price of oil. And only just now you're seeing that the crack spreads, especially with jet fuel, going above uh, the break even. So we have not seen jet fuel become profitable until recently, which indicates that the air travel is coming back. As you know, that was probably the hardest hit because of COVID. Uh, now you still see these vortexes, as you called them uh, before, in, in places like India happening. So it is delaying the recovery, but surely you can see demand coming back. It is reflected in the commodity price, but it's right. also being reflected in crack spreads, which have really been the hardest hit uh, since last year, uh, refinery crack spreads. Minister, what about options to raise any funds? Because we've seen this rush from a lot of midi state oil companies, you know, whether issuing bonds or initiating IPOs. Uh, is any of that on the table for you at the moment? Yes, I've never, we've never seen markets as liquid as they are today. We just uh, did a, uh, a Sukuk issuance for the first time for the oil and gas holding company. And we got the best rates so uh, we've received uh, for some time. So in terms of uh, there seems to be a large amount of liquidity. Equity, we've seen uh, private equity firms come into the region. I mean, started with Abu Dhabi with the pipelines and obviously the success that Aramco had uh, with EIG indicates that uh, the pool of liquidity in private equity is, is certainly there. Uh, and it seems to be targeting infrastructure more than, uh, than hydrocarbon access. But uh, debt is, is there. Liquidity is probably the highest I've, I've seen for some, some years. Excellency, is there any uh, assets that you can monetize or that you're talking to private equity about? You see what the Emiratis have done on the pipelines, the Saudis have done. Um, what assets could you monetize and are you actively engaging with private equity? I mean, yeah, we have been looking at this for, for some time. We haven't really made a commitment yet. Uh, we have, still have to take it through uh, the strategic uh, decision-making process. But uh, yes, we've got a lot of infrastructure assets that uh, can easily be uh, put or structured in a pool like that. We have a pipeline that connects us to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Aramco, uh, which is ideal. This is an ideal asset with a throughput structure for, uh, for some kind of a private equity deal. We've got... Uh, an LNG to import terminal, uh, which also is infrastructure. Obviously, we have a lot of upstream infrastructure for oil, gas, uh, above surface assets. All of those are definitely things that uh, that could fall into a structure to attract uh, equity uh, equity funding. Uh, in terms of uh, what investors are looking for, uh, a lot of it centers around progress that you might have made on plans to transfer some of these oil and gas assets, you know, whatever valuation comes from it, and that will go into a fund in which investors could be able to buy shares. Uh, 
Has there been any meaningful uh, momentum around that? I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not something new to us. We've done it uh, in various other sectors, whether you IPO it uh, or through infrastructure funds. We've, in Bahrain, we started the first Islamic infrastructure fund back in 2000. Uh, so all those mechanisms are really at hand and available. But as I said, we still need to make the strategic decision to move in that direction. But in terms of the vehicles, we, we've done it before in other se sectors and, uh, and we're ready to uh, mobilize once, once there is a strategic move in that direction.